graduating students is counterproductive. You know what's counterproductive too? If we both don't agree on how to start an episode, which just happened now. So this is our second introduction. Hey, Sebastian, how are you doing? I will stay on mute until you tell me to speak. So I am good. And I hope you will not grade me on that disaster start. The first start we, we tried on this episode, this is the second start, as you said. So hopefully, please, please do not grade me. Otherwise, I'm going to stress. Yeah. Did, you ever, did you ever get anything else but an A plus, maybe an A minus, uh, a minus in, your, in your career? Uh, why don't you talk to my boss? <laughs> <laughs> the, the top the motion was grading students is counterproductive you're not a student are anymore we, are we not all students of life no no meanwhile no, by, by now you're getting paid to be graded so it's a different ballpark okay <laughs> is that supposed to be cool <laughs> I mean, my kids would totally do that if you tell them, hey, you get money for grades. And some parents actually do that too, right? I, I heard that in the past. But uh, yeah, that's a completely different debate, I think, the question if you should do that. Yeah, grading students is counterproductive, is the motion. And we didn't come up with that motion ourselves. I was at a, at a podcaster conference and somebody who gave me his business card, which then subsequently in moving houses, I lost. I have to apologize. If you hear us, please let me know who you, who you are and we give you a shout out next episode. Someone suggested that topic to me and he was very passionate about it. The flip of the coin said, I would be for the motion and you'll be against. Um, and I will start. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Even I, yes, I, your co-host, had very good grades, if not the best grades at school. And maybe I sound arrogant, but that was the case. And I would stress, I would become obsessed over grades and maintaining my level. And I learned everything by heart without thinking critically. I have to admit it. It depends. Maybe not, all, maybe not always. But most importantly, I forgot to live. I was too serious all my life because of just maintaining the standard of good grades. So I've suffered from that. That's just a very personal example. But here's another example, which I think most people, if not everyone, can relate to, if not for having, it, for having done it themselves, but at least for having seen it around them. Cheating. Why do people cheat? That's cool. And I'm convinced the major reason, if not the only reason, is due to the grades. Like Nobody wants to have a bad grade. Nobody wants to be seen as being a disaster. So they're just going to copy and find, or find cheating mechanisms. And the thing is, when the focus becomes mostly focusing on grades, then you completely lose the focus, which is about the content that you want to learn and master. And because you feel bad, uh, because of a bad grade, uh, then you're not inclined to learn anymore. You're completely motivated and stressed. And I don't think it's reflective of what life is about, which is about the enjoyment of learning something, the pleasure of learning. Um, so that I'll explore more alternatives of what you can do instead of grading uh, in, my, in my second part. But I think um, what we could do as an uh, intermediate step for those who are obsessed with grading is making it optional. If the student asks for the grade, then why not give them the grading? Uh, but don't force it because it just encourages cheating and discouragement. And even the best students like I was um, just are not motivated for the right reason. We just want to have good grades. And I just learned by heart and I don't really think about what I'm doing. I just want to get the best grades. So it's really completely counterproductive. <laughs> And now on to Dirk. Let's for a moment reconsider what grades are for. Grades have been around for a really, really long time. What are grades for? They are not to, uh, to please you as an individual or torture you as an individual. Grades are mainly to organize a structured mass educational system, to train people at scale, if you will. And that is only possible if you can compare them, if you can make sure that people reach a common limit, uh, a common threshold of knowledge, so you can start the next topic, if you can ensure that the, the people that you train, the institutions that train people or educate people really have a minimum level of, of output. And all these things require some form of measurement. And while Giving grades may not be an ideal way, and yes, it has its downsides for the individual. 
actually, it's a very pragmatic, very practical and tested and proven way to get an understanding about how well your system is doing. Now, there are things that are problematic. You mentioned cheating, but arguably, you can try to find ways to counter that. So you can find tests that are not easy to cheat on. You can give uh, students uh, a whole range of uh, questions. You can ha design other tests. All these things are possible. They require maybe additional effort, but the, the result you yield still is the same. You have a, basically a machinery where people get in as relatively uneducated humans and on the other hand get out as educated uh, humans that can contribute to society. Now that may be cynical. Maybe you think there's more to life than that. But the truth is we still need people to get educated in relatively short time. And grades help organizing that and grades help making that efficient and therefore grades have its place and are important. Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. Fair enough about the training people at scale. However, there's a, there's a distinction between grading and using data um, as opposed to sharing that grade with the students. So personally, I'm not against actually having some form of, of data mechanism. I love data, don't get me wrong. So I think teachers indeed could actually have some form of you know, data grading, but they don't have to share it with the students. And this is, I think, what we're mostly talking about. You're talking about designing new tests to avoid cheating. Well, you know, you always you know that students will always come up with new ways to cheat. They will always be a step ahead of professors and teachers trying to you know go around cheating. And don't forget that the rest of the world, the majority of the world, has a very traditional education system. So you will not be able to design or come up with mechanisms or uh, jammers for the mobile phones or what have you to avoid cheating. So cheating will continue and will always happen. And again, I do I am absolutely convinced that cheating happens because of, because of the grading aspect. And if we talk about the entire school year, it's maybe not that necessary. Exams are different. Right? When you have competitions and exams to actually validate your degree, that may be slightly different. But let's say, let's look at the traditional school year. Uh, I think there's alternatives that you can examine instead of uh, the grading of students by professors. What about, that's an example, what about allowing students to grade themselves and see how close they are to what the teachers think they are good at or bad at in terms of grading. I think that's a good learning experience. It doesn't have any consequences. It doesn't have to be taken uh, at face value, but it's a good way and a useful way for students to learn to assess how good or bad what, what they do. Uh, we could also consider peer-to-peer -peer grading. You know, what about having other uh, students grade each other and have also a mechanism in which where they can assess whether they're good at that or not? I also mentioned making grading optional. But we could even completely remove grading and instead, because it's just one form of feedback, and instead of a number, I think comments, qualitative assessment is way more useful. The problem is, and come on, please remember when you were at school, you look at the grade, you don't really care about the comment from the professor. Like if you get a, an A, you don't care about what the professor has said or the feedback he's given you. But if the only thing he gives you or she gives you is um, the commentary and says, well, you've done that great and that was not so good and here's where you can improve and you have nothing else but that to read. It's way more significant and useful and relevant than just a grade, which is just an average of your essay. And let me fin I'll finish with two things. I talked about an essay. Exactly, that's the point. When you're not grading maths or physics where there is a binary answer and maybe different ways of getting to the answer, if you're talking about history or geography or literature, well, the grading is going to be very subjective from one professor to the other. In fact, there's maybe a high risk of bias uh, because you know you like just that student more than another one. He's not maybe better or she's not maybe better, but there, there could be a risk of bias in this case. So grading is actually not the best way also to properly assess objectively how a student performs. Bias is involved all the time. And finally, uh, with that grading, we maybe encourage students to take more risks in taking new ways to learn and thinking of new ways they can learn and reach the result, which is acquiring knowledge and thinking critically. So as you can see, I've proposed a number of options and alternatives, among them grading, um, but in a different way that we, we're, we're, we know that we use it today. Uh, and we can even remove it altogether because I think overall it is completely counterproductive. Dirk's rebuttal. So in your world, grading basically brings out the worst in humans. Uh, humans learn to cheat, and that's only due to grading, and apparently they do nothing else. But you know what? The other thing that typically happens through grading is that people compare with each other, start trying to compete with each other, 
and sometimes arguably people work harder and learn and are more focused precisely because they know they're going to be graded on precisely a known set of uh, criteria. It may have the downside that people start cheating because of grades. It has the upside that the whole class starts learning the same things and maybe even competes with each other and arguably may even learn faster than they would have learned before when they just allow their minds to wander, discover the universe, be curious, all these beautiful things that I would love to see in the school, but that's not the point of school. The point of school is really, as I mentioned, a more or less cynical one. Yes, it is also an educational place, but also it's a place where you learn in as short time as possible the right things, the things that you need to have a good functional start into life and then hopefully wander around and um, unpack all the beauty, all the knowledge, all the interesting pieces. Grades really help with focusing that energy and grades really bring out that precisely focused energy as well. So there is a positive side of that. Now, you mentioned a couple of things that you could do instead of grading. All good. I like them all, uh, although all have problems. First problem, they are not really comparable. They are not standardized. You cannot compare um, institutions with each other. You even have problems comparing the classes, yet, let alone the individuals in those classes or the teachers. So bad quality will hide underneath that fog of uh, bad measurement. Another thing you mentioned, yeah, peer grades, awesome. The good-looking girl in the class and the well-trained guy in the class will always have the best grades then. And you know that. Because we humans are biased. We just debated that in the past. So peer grading, can it? That's not working. For the same reason why grades coming from teachers are often biased, those will be even more biased. And you have a harder time really, really building that system in an unbiased way because it's not one teacher for, let's say, 30 uh, students per class. It's actually an, an indefinite number of, uh, of people grading each other. So I would say most of the, the alternatives are sounding very nicely look good on paper and as soon as you put them to the test you run into all sorts of practical reasons which is why the whole world keeps grading people because that's the practical choice that still does the job final statements let's hear sebastian i think what you said what you say Dirk, works in theory but the fact that we can't standardize some of the things i've mentioned i think because there's little calibration which happens among professors uh, or across um, high schools, I think it's also the same issue that we have. There's little harmony and collaboration across uh, schools and across countries. So it defeats the purpose. Competing with each other, I don't think you prevent competition without grades. In fact, there's many other ways to compete. Let me give a few examples. Being creative, kind, helpful, collaborative in class, you don't get a grade for that. But the professor, the teacher, can still highlight good behavior, which is just as important as you and I know in a company. In fact, even before performance, even before getting results, you want to highlight good behavior. So I think grading is actually demotivating and stresses all kinds of students, the good ones and the bad ones. And they're not adults yet. So I think it's important to preserve their attitude to not give up uh, with, with grades, which may demotivate them. And also to learn to deserve results without cheating, actually earning that title. I think cheating is way more widespread than we make it seem. Uh, I don't want to make it such a huge thing in my in my debate today, but I don't. I do think it's completely widespread. It will always exist, and I do think it's completely linked to the grading aspect. So, I want people. I want to educate the children in a way that is a bit more morally productive for themselves, deserving the the place they get to. Dirk, let's hear it. I like how you draw a direct line from grades to cheating. I urge our listeners to look at the other aspects. So people are not always cheating. I cheated occasionally in school, but that was not my default mode. And I'm pretty sure that was, wasn't was yours either. It was the grades that motivated me sometimes or sometimes even scared me into activity. And that may be possible to reach with other means. But the fact remains that grades are a system pretty easy to implement, most people understand, and it gives you a feedback loop that you can act on when done right. So whenever grades are done in the right way, the upsides and the benefits are higher than the downsides. 
and all the alternatives are either hard to implement, don't yield the results we look for, or are simply not working the way we hope they would work. So that was it. Today's debate about uh, whether or not grading student is counterproductive. I would say, Sebastian, I give you an A for this debate. <laughs> Now that's absolutely productive and helpful, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's convinced. Yeah, and uh, everybody out there who likes to give Sebastian A2, please go to the webpage and click on the right thumb. And everybody who wants to thumbs give thumbs me up. my A, uh, that's thumbs, well, thumbs up is yours, thumbs down is mine. Thumbs up also for Doug, same thing. Thumbs up for all of us. <laughs> You're doing the same thing. No, 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 no. Um, our listeners should decide for themselves. They don't need our hand-holding. They, they, they get an A-plus from us anyway, no matter what they choose, right? Absolutely. As long as they, as they rate us five stars on iTunes. <laughs> Which is another great. Thank so we're, not trying to cheat. we're not trying to cheat at all the system, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Don't hesitate to leave your feedback, comments. Same thing as usual. Facebook, uh, website, todebate.net, todebate.eu. Thanks for listening. Um, have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. I have to say, as a, as a, as a good student at school, I would be, retro retrospectively, I'd be annoyed not to have grades anymore because it was indeed, indeed a way for me to shine. Right? Like, of course, like, what would I not want to have good grades? once they actually have been achieved yeah, and that's deserved. A, that's right? a pretty so cool statement, fact, actually. Like, uh, uh, people who were not good at school, of course, hate grades. <laughs> but I actually, I, I actually disliked grades when I was trying to get them. Like, you know, the stress before the exam, and I would not have a life. Like, I have not lived a proper teenage life for a, a number of reasons, but among, among other things, because I was way too serious, and I was brainwashed by my parents to keep on having good grades. Right? When maybe it would be, have been okay to have probably the same grades, or even better, if I had relaxed a bit more, by the way, and gone out with friends a bit more. Uh, now, there's other reasons why things did not happen in a particular way, because of family conditions and situations. But still, I've been this way all my life, at, at university level, and, at, and then at work, and I'm trying to get a good grade. But is it, is it really the most important thing? I question that. So even for like a good student, at least in my case, and I'm sure I'm not the only weirdo out there, I'm not the only Sheldon, Right, there's Big Bang Theory for that, so clearly there must have been inspiration for other weirdos out there. So I do feel that we're putting pressure and, and suffering on children and teenagers for nothing, for nothing. And that, that is actually a very important point, because I had a different reaction than you. I like, well, I like is a, is a too large a word, but uh, I was okay with grades, but my reaction to grades were different than yours. So for me, grades signified the safe zone. I never really tried to optimize for the best grades. I tried for the good enough, uh, the sweet spot between I can focus on stuff I'm interested in and ignore the, the crap that I don't don't care about um, zone and still have a good enough grade to get on with school, don't lose anything really essential. And grades are a good way for measuring that. You kind of know that if you have like a, Somewhere in the middle is actually a safe zone. Uh, if, it, if it starts gliding down, you need to work harder. If it goes up, hey, celebrate, but maybe, maybe you want to dial down the effort a little. That way, I, I learned to navigate the system. I understood the rule of the system. I agree. I agree. And I, you know, I think everything you say makes sense. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot depends on the context. Parents, also the, the way the country envisions the, the grading system and then we're, we're stuck also by the the end um, the tail end of the education system which at some point you do need you need to, you do need to have some grading right the exam uh, or the university assessment or, well you do need actually I don't know maybe there's other ways to do that but I guess you want to have some indeed standardization at some point I love your face, like, oh shoot, I prepared the wrong thing again. Uh, no, it's okay, <laughs> everything's fine. 
you have this slight hesitation. That's quite I, funny. 